Hi guys and welcome Knemon here. In today's video I've got a little proposal so to speak. You see, Minecraft is an awesome game. It has some grindy bits like branch mining for your precious gravel, which is still kind of fun because you never know what you're gonna get. It's kind of gamble or lottery if you wish. But some bits are not that fun, mainly when you are preparing for a project and you need to craft a bunch of material. Now, some blocks have a custom mechanics to make them, which typically means we can either automate them or semi-automate them. But for the most part, crafting is just boring clicking back and forth, back and forth. Carpool tunnels guaranteed. This game needs some mechanic to automate creation of things. Whether it needs it a little or it needs it a lot, it's another question. But for the most part, it needs it to some degree. There has been proposals uh, for that showcase, for example by Ilmango, with the implementation by Skyrising, I believe, reusing the crafting table for that. It's nice, but that solution has some problems with it. Mostly from the technical modding reasons, I mean it's a pain in the butt to convert a rather normal block like a crafting table that doesn't have any function in the game, because the crafting is just client side, it's just a normal block to a container block entity without major problems if you want to pretend it's still vanillish game. But also because we are only sucking out items from the bottom of it, meaning it's actually quite complicated to use it with some more complex recipes where you would have a bunch of filler items uh, just with just drop in in order to shape the recipe. In order to extract the results of the craft from the crafting table, you need to fiddle with the hopper or to use movable hoppers, which is yet another thing that simply won't happen anytime soon. Now, my proposal is to use a dropper for that instead. The solution is sitting much closer to the existing reality of the vanilla game. You can flip flop between having that crafting dropper on or off and everything in your world should stay fully compatible with vanilla world format because droppers, believe it or not, can hold items and also have a nice 3x3 interface that reminds a little bit of something and also has a behavior already when they react to redstone pulses, it removes an item from its pocket. The modification I'm proposing is when a shape of items left in the dropper matches a recipe and the dropper is pointing to a crafting table, it crafts and spits that item instead of spitting a random one. It is also important that the dropper will retain all its original properties when it's not pointing to a crafting table or where there is no recipe in that shape. So why not the dispenser? Because typically dispensers should have these kind of weird actions coded in. First of all, crafting is actually quite a bit overwhelming. There's lots of things to it. And adding it to already blown up block like a dispenser, that would be probably too much. Also, some stuff can overlap. You can probably leave some leftover crafting components after doing a craft. And for example, you leave a snowball crafting a snow block. If you use a dispenser, that will shoot the snowball out and might, that might not be what you want to do. So in this case, we are using a dropper to make sure that all the items can be just output regularly through the front of it. Other than these two details, it's not a big deal. It could actually be a dispenser as well. But I decided to use a dropper here instead. There's two more changes I implemented with regards to the crafting dropper and what a crafting dropper is, is a dropper that points into a crafting table. The first change is that hoppers and other droppers and dispensers will only input one item per slot to the crafting dropper. Otherwise spreading crafting ingredients would be quite annoying and really, really dirty. You'd actually only be able to craft items in full stacks at a time without that change. Which is not a big deal, it's just a little bit ugly. And the second is that the crafting dropper will output a comparator signal that is proportional to the number of filled slots rather than total size of the container. For example, like in this case, this is a regular dropper with nine loose items in it and it outputs a signal of one, but the same crafting dropper with nine items organized in a shape recipe outputs a full signal because it's full. For example, another regular dropper with a full stack of items outputs a signal of 2, while the same dropper with one item filled in outputs a signal of 1. So you can very easily read how much of your recipe is already put in the dropper with a comparator. The comparator integration is not that super important for crafting process, but allows for finite control, although you could just technically just time stuff up and you could be fine. But the solutions with comparators are typically more nicer and preferred. 
Also, the fact that the dropper needs a redstone power to craft an item gives us plenty of time to deliver and organize ingredients, and the fact that dropper can output to any of its sides, meaning that we can have a hopper below the crafting table to suck out the products, as well as a hopper below the dropper to control items inside of it, which is very, very nice. The only thing we have to be careful about is uncrafting hopper speeds, where we get much more items back than items we are feeding in. In this case we need to throttle the crafter or let the items just spill and collect via water streams or for example use hopper minecarts inside the crafting table uh, just to collect items faster. So now let's look at a few examples how this crafting dropper can be used in practice. So first is a very simple item packer. So we have for example here the crafting dropper over here. We have our chest with our ingredients over there and we'll be converting iron ingots into iron blocks and whenever this dropper fills up fully then this comparator will give out a signal and that would enable the craft of an item. As you can see it all works nicely, you can see items are being crafted and output into that chest below. It's a little bit on the slow side but we can see that there's plenty of sides around the dropper that you can use to input items. For example, we can very easily make a triple speed crafting dropper the same way, just basically puts three items at a time from three hoppers around it and craft items much faster. So that was kind of a simple crafting dropper. So the second here we have a simple uncrafting dropper. In this case, we have a tileable solution, which is pretty nice. The on-off switch is probably not in the most convenient spot in the back, but that's okay. And we have to take care of throttling and items in this case because we can craft much faster than we can suck in with the hopper underneath it and we have to match that speed. That's why we'll be reading from that hopper and only allowing an item to go into the crafting dropper which is here on the bottom when we run out of items over here. It's pretty straightforward. The only difference here, I used a dropper to input stuff into the crafting dropper because we wanted to essentially send just one item at a time and we can just do it by using a dropper to feed in items rather than a hopper. So here's another layout of exactly the same thing, just slightly differently put in together. It's also tileable and it's also on-off switch. It's a little bit awkward position, but hey, can maybe suggest something else. Now, here I'll be showing a bunch of crafting setups for various different items, some less and some more universal. They're kind of bulky, but that's intended because I just wanted to show pretty neatly, I would say, like what's the layout of like how to think about crafting with it. And you can compact it later if you want or if you really need to. So first is a very simple crafter doing a two by two recipe of honeycombs, making them into the honey blocks. And this is a little bit different than the other ones because this is solely based on timings. So as you can see, we have our hopper to the side uh, feeding items in. And because we need to organize items in a 2x2 two two grid, we have to have this extra item here over there that will allow us to have a proper shape of the recipe. But this means that we need to suck that item before we can craft it. That's how we have the sorting set up here at the bottom of the dropper that allows us to suck these items and they're typically locked but when we unlock it we are able to suck in that one extra item from the dropper from the recipe but the good thing about this is that torch is when it turns on back again this actually triggers the craft so this is a very simple setup with just a single torch and a block to do two things at the same time and the rest in this particular configuration is just it's just timing really when we have when we our recipe reaches five items this triggers the sucking of the items and speeding up the final honeycomb block and the rest is just delay to input from that dropper above it this extra item when the first two items are filled in with honeycombs and that's pretty much it to stop it is a little bit messy we just need to remove that first item or the second item when the narrow nugget is already placed and that will stop the cycle and you just need to fill the recipe so it's full to start it again now this is not to showcase a nice example, this is just to show what can be done just by simple delays. So here's another variant of crafters and are more proper that are based on organizing the inputs with streams that you put into the hopper line and they are triggered with a pulse. 
benefits of them, they can be very easily stopped and started and they also finish all the always a crafting recipe when you turn it off. In this case, you're also doing a simple 2x2 recipe doing iron trap doors. And for that, we need iron ingots in 2x2 pattern with a little nugget over here in the third slot to fill the dropper in space. In this case, the solution is also very simple. We just need to input the items in the specific order and then when we feel that this is already full enough, so we have five items, we need to trigger the bottom sorter to suck out the items out of the crafting dropper and then trigger the craft and that's it. And this clears up the dropper. Now, bigger setups that have up to nine items per craft, it's actually a very simple solution over here. We just have a line of hoppers that point into our crafting dropper and we feed the items with droppers. Here the add droppers at the bottom feed to the hoppers directly, that's why they point to the earlier slots and then droppers above them uh, point to the next slot through the chest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then we have delay between each section, so we always guarantee to have items in this order. In this case, our recipe is a little bit more complex. We'll be doing a diamond hose. And for that, we need lots of the filler items because we'll be filling them from left to right, from top to bottom. But other than that, the craft is exactly the same. So after we fill all the items, we, did, we detect we have eight or everything what we needed. We just need to enable the sorter below to suck in up to four items. So we have to have enough delay and then trigger the craft. So as you can see, the items arrive in a specific order. And then we enable the sorter below. And then at the end, when we relog the sorter, that would essentially trigger the craft and everything should be crafted properly. And the diamond holes will be spit up into the crafting table and picked up by this hopper below it. Pretty simple stuff. At the back, the circus is, is exactly the same as with our simpler recipe. Just need to have a longer delay to allow for more items to be able to be sucked up from the recipe. Next up, we have a setup to craft a typical or 3x3 recipe. In this case, we have those 9 ingredients stacked up in those chests as such. And then we have a very simple here solution where we basically monitor if our dropper gets full. And if a dropper gets full with ingredients, we just override that comparator and then we trigger the craft, which is essentially a pulse that will trigger our dropper, but also trigger our piston to send another craft through. Very simple setup here to have a 3x3 recipe. Life gets a little bit more complex when, for example, we want to craft honey bottles. Now, in the first snapshots of 1.15, the craft for honey blocks would allow only to craft one item at a time, even in the inventory, which was a little bit weird because that was the first block that would take much longer to craft it than to place and remove it, which is a little bit weird, but that's got fixed soon anyways. But in this case, the recipe is a little bit more complex because not only we need a filler item to have our 2x2 grid of items to be able to craft but also when we craft it we'll be left with four items here in the inventory of the dropper for empty bottles so we need to remove them as well in this case the filling of items looks exactly the same just you have to have five of those chests filled for ingredients and in this case we just monitor when we have enough to trigger the process we obviously we need to have our sorter to be enabled to remove the iron nugget but then we have a little bit delay and then instead of triggering the dropper once, we trigger the dropper a couple of times, allowing for all items, including the crafted honey block, but also four bottles to escape. And we just do it by extending the pulse that essentially triggers the crafting. Now, because of the solution here where we use observer clock, to trigger the items it's a little bit faster, but also it's faster for the pickup hopper below, which means that we need to use a hopper minecart stuck inside that crafting table to be able to suck all the items in. Pretty simple stuff. I'm here using glass blocks around the dropper just not to butt power it uh, just by any chance because that would mess up the crafting. Other than that, everything looks exactly the same as before. Our last recipe is the most complex of them all. It's it's not that we're crafting anything new, we're just crafting honey blocks, but in this case we are showing how to do it in the most kind of complex setup. So not only we have a lot of the filler items, because we decided that we want for whatever reason to craft in this section of the crafting table, 
but we will be left with extra four items in the crafting table. So this is essentially the most complex recipe you can get through it. So the delivery of items is as we discussed, the same way. Then we just basically look here in the back. We need to take a comparator output from the back of the crafting dropper and then trigger it early enough so we have some time and delay so we can enable the item filter at the bottom for quite some time. In this case, it's just to enable us to suck five items. And then we have the same kind of delay that goes into our observer piston clocks at the top, not only to craft an item, but also split out those four extra bottles and getting ready for the next craft. And then when the system finishes, this gets triggered as, as well. I'm using here class blocks not to trigger anything here below, but powered. And then we request a new batch of items. Again, not really complex, but hey, this is essentially the most uh, complex you can get with crafting in this uh, game right now. And again, here we get our crafted honey blocks and glass bottles. And at the bottom, we have our iron nuggets, which we technically can refill back to the slots that use them. Now, these two setups are mostly for the fun of it, but that shows another ability of the crafting dropper that's quite unique, is the ability to randomize it a little bit. In this case, we have two setups. First is feeding birch planks, which we can use to essentially generate random uh, wooden items because we have a dropper here and there is no recipe for three by three of planks. So the dropper will output a random item instead and then will continue to do so until it finds the recipe and then it'll output something at, at the end. So we'll always guarantee that you'll always have a, either a button at the end of the craft or maybe a pressure plate or a slab from it. And we'll be probably getting a lot of birch planks back but we can always feed them back to the system. So when I turn on this clock here in the back, you can see that we have essentially two cycles. First of all, we want to enable this hoppers feeding into the dropper. And then in the on state of that clock in the back, we essentially are clocking our dropper, outputting whatever is able to find to craft. So in this case, if you look here at the bottom, we have a random set of items crafted already. We have our chest, we have our sticks, we have our pressure plates, we have our slabs and plenty of birch planks because that's essentially the randomness of this craft. It's a pretty interesting concept. It might be useful in some cases. Anyways, this is not like the most compact of the designs. I just wanted to show a very simple setup with a simple clock. You can toggle between unlocking of the hoppers and then triggering the crafting dropper with a fast clock to get the items out of it. Again, we have the minecart with hopper in the front of it, just to make sure we are able to suck up all the items, regardless of the speed, pretty much. Here's another setup we have on the sides, because wooden planks is not a product that we can use to craft the most items, it's actually iron ingots. We can have up to 14 items from that, or then 11 from the wooden planks. But the only exception here is that when you fill up that crafting dropper with iron ingots, that would always craft an iron block. And you want to prevent that actually by removing for a split second that crafting table in front of it, allowing it to just drop a random item instead, and then it will continue to our craft. In this case, because the last craft possible, if all else fails, is an iron ingot into iron nuggets, we all are, we are actually guaranteed to have more than what one hopper can actually suck up in terms of the items. So we have these two lines over here feeding into the chest. If you look into the dropper, you can see it fills with the items very quickly. And then we quickly remove the crafting table, allowing to spit the iron ingot and then craft a random set of items. And if you look at the chest at the bottom, we can see it's mostly iron ingots, but we also get some pretty cool stuff like pieces of armor, buckets, iron doors, uh, pressure plates, lots of shears because they don't stack, etc. It's pretty cool stuff. So that's it guys for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and my proposal how we can solve the crafting problems in this game. I really like the solution with the dropper. Not only that it turned out really easy to do and requires really tiny changes into original game code to mod this in, but also the ability to control where the final product is spat out, plus the optional randomness you can do with it, it's really, really cool. Now, you won't find this feature under regular carpet mod, nor this is a carpet app, because I've seen people guessing that might be it. 
it's a part of the Carpet Extra mod, which is an extension mod with all the cool and wacky features that will fall outside of the typical Carpet mod scope, like auto-crafting. To use it, just download Carpet Extra along with the Carpet mod for your Minecraft version and just plop them both into your mods folder and you should be good to go. So, if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to leave me a like. If you have an opinion about auto crafting dropper or auto crafting in general, leave me a comment in the comment section below. Subscribe if you are new and see you in the next one. Bye bye!